Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have the Simon Says Stamp May 2019 card kit called Delicate Flowers. And this kit is still available, so I will have that linked down below. And if you have been watching my recent videos, I've tried, I changed my linking system. I'm trying something new. And um, the Simon Says Stamp links really aren't working. And the, part, the reason for that is because I'm not an affiliate of theirs. So I'm going to have to work something out. I'll figure some sort of a system of linking uh, those without you know messing up my other links so I do apologize for that but I am working on it so I'll have those items listed down below but let's go ahead and take a look at what comes inside this kit this is a beautiful kit for May it's got these beautiful soft colors and um, it starts out with candy of course as always so I'll go ahead and put that in my stash and then we'll jump right into it. So this one comes with one bottle each of the Tim Holtz Ranger Alcohol Pearls in Sublime, Intrigue, and Tranquil. And it also comes with one of the Tim Holtz Alcohol Blending Solutions in those smaller bottles. These are beautiful and you just have to shake them up to get those powders in there or moved around the little particles because it, it's gorgeous and they give off a lot of shine. It also comes with three envelopes in the colors Metallic Green, Cotton Candy, and White. And those are by Simon Says Stamp. It also has one roll of Cardabella Flower Bouquet Washi Tape, and I don't actually use it on any of my projects. I did plan to, but the card I had started out using it on just didn't work. So I will definitely use these on envelopes as I send out these cards. It also comes with these gorgeous papers, and originally I was going to just open it from the bottom, but then I thought, no, I'm going to trim off the top because this is great to be able to hold those papers right in there. And so it's the Moda Scrap let your soul bloom six by six papers and they're one-sided and they're gorgeous and it just i've had their papers before and they always have this watercolor feel to them at least the ones that i have and they're just beautiful some beautiful backgrounds some plain colors just all really really pretty and so i'm just going to go ahead and put those back into that um holder that they came in so i can save that and i don't lose any of the pieces it also has the Simon Says Stamp exclusive Delicate Flowers 6x8 stamp set with a lot of beautiful blooms and leaves and sentiments. So this is, I think, going to be a fan favorite for sure. It also has two sheets of Tim Holtz Alcohol Ink cardstock in the color Silver Sparkle, and it is super sparkly. And it also has two sheets of 4x7 Yupo paper, so you could cut those down and end up getting four card fronts out of that. So that's really nice. It has an idea sheet. And then it has the card stocks in the colors green leaf and 120 pound white, as well as it's supposed to have cotton candy, but mine I think came with the color lemon chiffon. So it's beautiful and it all works. For card number one, I cut down some of that Yupo paper just in half, and I'm going to use the Sublime um, alcohol pearl inks. And you just want to shake these up really, really well because that stuff settles down at the bottom. And I'm just going to concentrate most of my uh, ink just to that lower left hand corner and I have used some of the uh, blending solution as well and I have a marker spritzer here so this marker spritzer is just you know just a marker spritzer that you would use with um, some of like the, the distress markers that they have and so I'm just spraying or pushing that ink around trying to keep it concentrated mostly to that lower left hand corner and then once I am happy with the look that I have I'm going to use the alcohol lifting because you can tell I have some of that. But here I wanted to show you that the cap can come off this alcohol blending solution. And if you have a bigger bottle, then you can always refill this little bottle, which is great. So it'd be good for travel. I mean, I wouldn't take it on an airplane, but you could, you know, if you're just traveling somewhere local and you want to be able to use your alcohol inks, that's a good way to do it. So I'm going to show you up close how pretty that looks eventually. It's so shimmery and shiny. Take a look at that. It's just beautiful. But for some added effect, I wanted to see if this would work on the alcohol pearl inks. I wasn't sure, so I inked up one of the leaf images, or several of the leaf images, with the alcohol lift ink. And my pad's very dirty, as you can tell. Um, I don't know how to avoid that. I clean my stamps as much as possible, but I don't know how to avoid that. And I'm just stamping down onto the Yupo paper, and then I pick that color up, and I'm trying to stamp it down on just a white piece of cardstock. It is very subtle. It is picking up the ink. And it is stamping it down on that white, but it's just way too subtle. So I don't end up using that white piece of cardstock for anything um, other than scraps. But, and you don't really see anything as I'm stamping. If you've never used the alcohol lift ink before, the magic comes 
here. So you're going to take a paper towel and you're just going to dab. You want to dab and when you have most of that ink picked up then you can start buffing. And when you start buffing that is when you will start to actually see what I'm talking about. So take a look. You can see it's very very subtle but you can see the leaf stamped in there and you can't really see it at all on the white cardstock. Now for my images I'm going to stamp out the buds. I'm taking the bigger bud and then the smaller bud I'm going to stamp out twice. This is just onto some expressive cardstock and I'm stamping this down with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I plan to do some Copic coloring and I'm not going to show you all the coloring but the colors that I used are, if I wrote that down, V01 and RV55 and it's super simple coloring. I started with a lighter color, took the darker color over the top just on the spots where I thought that the shadowing would be and when I'm happy with that then I'll take that lighter color once again and pull that color out a little bit more to blend it and I do that for all three and then I'm going to fussy cut all three as well. I don't mind fussy cutting, I know some people do, but I really don't mind. I'm always jamming to some music in the background so I'll just sit there and, and fussy cut or color or whatever. For my card base, I'm using that yellow cardstock that came in my kit, and I had cut that down to four and a quarter by 11 inches, and I'm scoring that at five and a half inches to make a top folding A2 size card. And then the scrap cardstock that I tried to stamp the green ink out of, I stamped my sentiment onto, and then trimmed that down. And I'm using some score tape. This is about a sixteenth of an inch thick, and I just put that on the back of my sentiment. And I'm going to adhere the buds down using some liquid adhesive. And before I stick down my sentiment. I just want to kind of make sure my placement of my buds is cor correct, you know, because I'm going to have those mostly behind. So I'll take those two smaller buds and I will glue those down behind the sentiment where I want that sentiment, peel off the backing paper of the sentiment, and I don't trust my eyes to get this straight, so I do pull out my T-ruler and then I will line up my sentiment that way and that'll ensure that it's at least straighter than if I tried to do it on my own. <laughs> Uh, and then for the bigger bud, I'm going to have that kind of over, overlapping the sentiment, so I will put a little bit of that 1 16th inch score tape on the back of there, and then I'll peel off the backing paper, but put a little bit of glue on the bud that will overlap the sentiment just so that that will stay down. And then I'll take that liquid glue once again, and I will adhere that Yupo paper down to my card base. And I had cut the Yupo paper down to 4 inches by 5 and a quarter, so that way it will be... Uh, just leave a little bit of a yellow border. For a final bit of embellishment with this card, I will grab some Nouveau Dream Drops in the color Gold, Lu Gold Lux, and I'm just putting those variously or randomly all over the, the sides, just to add a little bit of extra interest. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to tap those down to kind of flatten them out a little bit, because I like the flattened look. And then that is actually going to finish off card number one. Those alcohol inks, they really do pack a big punch. Card number two is a pretty simple one because it focuses on one of the patterns from the pattern paper. So I'm just going to trim this down to fit the front of my card base, which is going to be some of that green cardstock that came in the kit. So I'm just trimming this paper down. Uh, I end up trimming it down, I think, to four inches by five and a quarter. And then my card base is, as usual, because this is just typically what I do, a four and a half in, or four and a quarter inch by 11 inch piece of cardstock cut, uh, trim, scored at five and a half inches to make a top folding A2 size card. So I have gotten most of my pieces ready, and I have a scrap of green cardstock, just, just a little bit lighter than the other cardstock, and I stamped my sentiment onto there just with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink, because that's what I had handy, and I'm gonna trim that down, just keeping it long and uh, just using my paper trimmer and then I will line that all up kind of get an idea of where I want that I want that background paper to just be most of to do most of the talking and when you just look through your stash you probably have a lot of pretty papers like that and you can make some super simple fast easy cards just like that so I've put my glue on the back of my paper and I've lined it all up on the left hand side just leaving a little bit of a border on the top bottom and then the right hand side and I'm going to use some foam tape on my sentiment to add a little dimension. Since this is a very simple card and I clearly didn't paint that background, I wanted to add just a little bit of something. So I've put that foam tape on the back and I'm going to use my T roller to make sure that I line this up straight. And then I will just adhere that down. And I do have a little bit of hangover so I'm going to turn that over and trim that excess off. And then for a final bit of embellishment, I have grabbed 
these Buttons Galore and More Lucky Charms Sparklets. These, I think, came in a previous kit, and I thought that green just matched so beautifully. So I'm grabbing some of the beads out of there, and I'm adhering those down with my Crystal Katana and some of the liquid glue. This Crystal Katana works so great for just picking up those little pieces, the big pieces, and this way I can use both of my hands just as tools, and it, it works out very nicely. Um, I love my Crystal Katana. I've said this before. I know it's a bit of an investment, but that tool has never failed me. So... And then I'll finish off just with a few more gems. And then I'm going to grab my Jelly Roll 05 Sakura White Gel Pen. And I'm just going to add a few little dots around the text. And that will finish off card number two. Card number three is actually two cards. I make uh, the same well, basically the same card using a couple different variations. And I'm using that silver uh, shimmer cardstock that came in the kit. I thought I would give that a try, so I cut it in half. And I am trying with these alcohol inks to <laughs> keep them fairly concentrated to a certain area. So I'm not doing anything new or different other than I'm just trying to keep these in a specific area because I plan to do stamping over them. The one thing about alcohol inks that are very consistent is that they're inconsistent <laughs> as far as like, you know, their movement and because as you'll see, I try to make the same type of card using the same techniques and everything and just because it's a liquid and it just moves differently and, you know, on each piece, it, it, I do come up with two different results. So, I mean, it's the same concept on both, but it is different results. So I'm just going back and forth and I'm loving how the blue and the pink combine to make purple and that they're still their own colors as well. And as you can see, I keep bringing my stamp set over it because I want to make sure when I stamp the flower over the top that I have that basically covered uh, so that it just looks like a blue and pink flower. And now I'm going to take this, the green color, the Sublime, and I am going to just kind of work it on each of those sides because I plan to stamp some leaves in that area. And like I said, they have a mind of their own for the most part. So I'm just working it back and forth and trying to get some semblance of color. Almost like if you were to paint with your watercolors and, you know, because you've seen me do that before, if you've watched my channel at all, and other people have done that too. I'm just trying to get the same kind of concept without a... Um, without my paintbrush just moving it with the air and I, I love the organic feel of it it's really a neat look it's because it's so different and pretty and you know so you can just get these really cool results I'm tapping the color in certain areas just to get some little flecks of color and some spots are a little bigger than others I'm using my air a little bit but you notice if you don't use the alcohol blending solution you don't get quite as much of a blend I'm going to take one of my brushes that I use specifically for alcohol inks and I'm going to put some of that blending solution right on the, the paintbrush and then I'm going to splatter that so that'll give some little splatter effects inside the alcohol inks and push those alcohol inks away so it'll give a little bit of a, a diff, just a different effect. And so I'm going to come in more with a little bit of the green, a little bit more of the blending solution. And if you don't like something, you don't like the way it looks, bring in that blending solution. You can usually get it to change a little bit. Uh, like I said, these do have a mind of their own, but you can kind of work with them a little bit and try to see if you can get something different. So here's what I did with that first panel. I am using some VersaFine ink, and I do that on this, the other panel as well. I'm stamping on, with VersaFine, but I want to emboss over it, so i got to make sure that my colors or my, my embossing folder, or em folder, embossing powders aren't going to stick where they aren't supposed to, and they don't because those alcohol inks dry very quickly, which is good. So I will ink that up with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then I'm going to go over it with the clear embossing powder. You'd probably get a better result if you had black embossing powder, but I found out a couple weeks ago my embossing powder is, my black is kind of garbage and I haven't bought anything new. So we're just gonna go with what we have. And so I'm gonna heat this and I'm not sure how it will react with the heat because of this paper, but it works fine. It works really well actually. So it, it melted it just fine as you could see, but it, it dulls down that black. So this is where I decide, after I went ahead and did the leaves and everything, that I made another panel. So here's the other panel. And I am going to stamp it again with the VersaFine ink. But I am going to bring in this new favorite black embossing powder of mine, the Brutus Monroe Raven Sparkle. This stuff is gorgeous. I love this stuff. So it's really deep black. And it also has some sparkle. And you will see that this actually gives a better result than my clear embossing powder did. So I am in love with this. That Raven Sparkle is just gorgeous. So I will link that down below if that's something you're interested in. And here I am heating this. 
as you can see, it stays nice and crisp, dark black. And so that one shows really, really well on that, the leaves and, and the flower, as you can tell. They're both pretty. One's a little bit more subtle, but I really like that, that Raven Sparkle. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish with the rest of the card. I am stamping out my sentiment just on some black cardstock, and I'm going to stamp that with Versifying, or Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink. Cover that with some white embossing powder, and I'm going to do it on both ends. The reason I'm doing it on both ends is so that I have a straight line for both, and that way it's easier to cut. So once I've heat those with my heat tool, and I've you know gotten that smooth and melted, and you'll be able to tell because you can tell it's shiny once it's melted. Just hold it up to the light, and I will just trim those down. And that made it really easy. And I even um, cut the edge. I covered both of those back panels with some foam tape, and then I put butt those right up to the upper right-hand corner on each of those pieces of white cardstock. So that was the white, the 120-pound white cardstock that came in the kit that I trimmed down, and I got two top-folding A2 size cards out of that. And once I've got that adhered, I'm going to start figuring out the placement of my sentiment. And I do end up putting just a tiny piece of, of that uh, foam tape on the back of that one side because that's going to overlap. And then I will use liquid glue for the rest of that. So I'll peel off that backing paper, grab my liquid glue, and put that all over the back there. And I'm going to try and line that up on my glass mat. And believe it or not, I actually didn't do too, too bad of a job. I probably should have grabbed my T-ruler, but sometimes, sometimes we learn, sometimes we don't. <laughs> and then I will go on and do the same thing with the other one. And I thought that that was probably good enough, but I just couldn't stop there. So I do end up grabbing some Nouveau Ebony Drops. These are um, just some crystal, crystal drops. And I only put three on there. And once I'm done, that will finish off card number three. And I do really like the way these turned out. So pretty. So pretty. Card number four is going to focus a lot on those patterned papers. So I'm going to take my stamp set and I am going to stamp directly onto those beautiful patterned papers. And I'm just going to use some Memento Tuxedo Black ink to do so. And I'm not putting these in my Mini Misty, which you could do, but or your whatever stamping platform you might have. But this, this worked out just fine. I'm going to stamp one flower. I'm going to stamp several of the leaves. And then I'm going to stamp three of the rosebuds as well. Uh, I am also, I don't show it on camera, but I will use some Copics just to do a little bit of shading and highlighting or shadowing on these images. And for the flower, I use V01. The leaves I use YG03, and the buds I use E43. And I'm just going to cut, fussy cut these out, and I'm using my Cutter B scissors. These are fantastic for doing any sort of fussy cutting. And now that those are all out, I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. I'm just using that same brown color, and I'm going to eventually trim that down. But as you can see, I also trimmed down some of the pattern paper for a background, and I also trimmed down my background um, or my card base. I will cover the back of the rose, or the rose, the flower, with some one inch foam tape, or one eighth inch. And then I'm gonna start putting everything together. I decided with those leaves that I could trim those down and I could get a little bit more mileage out of the big leaves that I had, because otherwise a lot of it would be covered by the, the flower and I didn't really want that. So now I'll just start adhering everything with some liquid glue just kind of placing the flower on top to make sure I have an idea of where I want those leaves and buds to go. My background panel was trimmed down to leave just a slight border on the left and right hand side when I put that down on the card base. So it measures five and a half inches by four inches. So that's just gonna leave a slight border. And then I'll start adhering the other pieces down. So the flower, I'll just peel off all the backing paper and then I'll adhere that over the top. It's funny how it looks like a hot mess underneath. <laughs> and then I do put a little bit of foam tape behind my sentiment. I wasn't sure originally if I wanted to pop that up, but I did. So I put a little bit behind there, trim that down, and I do end up leaving a, a, the large part, that long strip hanging off. And I do that because I wanna trim it to fit just the card base itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that liquid glue to adhere my panel down to the base. And then once I get that adhered, 
I will flip that over or open up the card and I will trim down the sentiment. And for a final bit of embellishment, I'm going to go ahead and grab those Nouveau Dream Drops once again in the color Gold Lux. These are so beautiful. Thanks again, Mary, for my beautiful birthday present. I'm getting some good mileage out of these babies, that's for sure. And then once I'm done with all the little dots, that's going to finish off card number four. Those pattern papers are so pretty. Look through your stash. Check out your pattern papers. You could do so much with them. Card number five is our final card today, and it is all about those alcohol pearl inks. So I have trimmed down another piece of that Yupo paper. So basically one of the pieces that I had left over, I just trimmed it in half again. Uh, because I plan to, to make these pieces into their own little separate piece. So I've started off with the Intrigue. That's the color pink there. And I'm just going to cover that panel with the Intrigue as well as using that blending solution all over it and my marker spritzer just to get some variation in the color. And I'm, I really love the harsh lines. I know that some people really like the... Um, well, I like it all, I guess. These these alcohol inks I could just play with all day long. And I don't know if I said it earlier in a disclaimer, but you definitely want to use these in a ventilated area, pretty well ventilated area, um, or have a fan going or something so that, uh, it, you know, just to prevent any sort of irritation. So moving on to the second piece, I have a plan for this. Uh, once again, I'm going to try and stamp over the top of it. So I'm using the blue, which is the... I can't remember the name, Tranquility. And so I'm kind of putting my stamp over the top just to see where I want the green, which is the Sublime. And I'm gonna put that down at the bottom. And once again, just kind of just keep manipulating till I get a look that I think is, is cool, basically. Cause like I've said before, you could work with these over and over and over again, and you're not gonna get the same result. You get something similar possibly, but you probably won't get the same result. They just have a mind of their own. So I'll just keep working that paper or the Yupo paper and the, and the inks together. And I just love the shine that those pearl inks are just beautiful. So here's what I was talking about. Uh, once again, I'm going to stamp using Versa Fine Onyx Black Ink. And now keep in mind I'm doing this on Yupo paper, which is not actually a paper. This is more of a plastic. So I'm going to cover that with the uh, Raven Sparkle Embossing Powder by Brutus Monroe. Love that stuff. And you want to make sure that your heat tool is good and hot. And you're just going to keep moving it, pulling it away, keep moving it, pulling it away, because you will warp this stuff so quick it's not even funny. So I'm just keeping, you know, just keep going and pulling it away and making sure that I get it melted as good as possible. Then I fussy cut it out and trim down my pink panel to kind of make it look like a tag. And I'm going to start assembling my piece. So this is using that last piece of yellow cardstock that I have. And I decided I needed to bring in some of that purple. And I love how these colors combine. So I just have a strip. So save your strips, a strip of the Yupo, and I'm going to get... I just want a purple strip variated with the with the blue and the pink together so I'm going to keep working those until I get the colors that I want there because I plan to use that just as a side piece I originally had tried to use the uh, washi tape that came in the kit but it just did not match with what I had been working on so I set that aside and decided to make my own piece to go with it and I clean off my mat just using some uh, my water bottle and a microfiber cloth for the background of my card panel, or my card base, I have some Distress Ink in the color Fossilized Amber, which typically you don't stamp with this stuff. It's not great for it, but because I'm doing a background, I don't care. I'm just inking up that same leaf, and I'm going to variate my pattern all over that back, because I just want to have a little bit of interest on the back. I don't want it to stand out too much, but I didn't want it to just be stark yellow on the back. So I'll stamp that all over, and then when I'm ready, I'm going to start assembling my card. I'm using some liquid glue here once again, and I'm going to line that up on my glass mat so that I can get that piece fairly straight. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll flip that over and trim off the excess. And then I'll start piecing the rest of it together. I even saved that little green strip that's left over. You'll see I'll use that as well. But I have a fourth inch circle punch I'm stamp or cutting out to make this really look like a tag. I trim down that little strip of green and stick that on the top so I can bring in just a little bit more of the green. And then I'm going to layer my tag over the top of that. So this card focuses mostly all over those alcohol inks. 
which I said I could play with all day long. If I had the time, believe me, I would. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment before I actually adhere down my, my flower. But the sentiment I use is, you're amazing, and I just stamp that right down at the bottom with the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I'm using foam tape all over the back of my flower because it did get a tiny bit warped. Not too much because I was really good about moving the heat tool around. I'll stick that down. And then for a final bit of embellishment, I've got some twine. This is just a natural color twine that I have. And I'm going to double it up. And I'm going to just manipulate that into a bow. And then when I'm happy with the bow, which you can't see me doing, but I just keep manipulating that, I'll trim it, see how long I want it, and then just trim off the excess pieces. And then I'm going to grab some Ranger Multimedium Matte Glue because that is really good for sticking this stuff down and it dries pretty quickly. I'll put a couple of blocks on top of it to let it dry and then when that's dry I'll pull those off. And that is the card, the last card, card number five. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the five cards I made. I had so much fun creating with this kit. Anytime you have some alcohol inks, I'm all in. And uh, I really was happy with the way these turned out. So I'd love to know if you have a favorite, um, what you think of these cards. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section down below if you'd like to. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Like this video if you liked it. And as always, I do appreciate you stopping by, leaving love and just being here. So thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.